Right, let's talk Crystal Palace at Anfield. Towards the end of the season now, if you didn't have a weird feeling going into this part of the season, good for you. But I think a lot of other people did have some weird feelings. I know a lot of us were feeling very confident. I certainly had an element of confidence. I never expected a 3-0 at home to Atalanta in the Europa League. But I did know that Liverpool were going to get matched up at this point in the season. I did know that some people were going to work out what some of our build-up play was. I did know that there would be players who, if we didn't get the back, or if we were still trying to reintegrate them into the squad at this point in the season, it's going to make it a little bit trickier. And that is where we should really talk about the way that Liverpool are playing right now. Why Liverpool are playing this way. And also some of the criticisms that came out of the Atalanta game, which I felt were pretty reasonable, but some of them felt a little bit hyperbolic. There were a lot... <laughs> Uh, there were a lot of comments on the channel about who they thought was good and who they thought was not so good. So welcome back to Lawrence McKenna channel. If you want to hit the Discord, there is a Discord link in the description. If you want to hit the Patreon to help us keep making this kind of content, then go hit it. I just want to go back to some of these comments that we saw on the channel right before, okay? Um, most of them saying, uh, nice new hair. But apart from that, agree with most of what Lawrence said here, but have to be more critical of some of these players. Fair enough. Simicast was poor. Curtis Jones wasn't up to speed, which... They say they don't blame him for, and Joe Gomez was wasteful with the ball. Ultimately, we could, uh, we could have had a different result with better cohesion in the first half, and the selection did play a part in that. Well, boy, do I disagree with you. Um, boy, do I agree and disagree, but also, boy, do I agree with you. The, the areas that I agree, right, I think are, first of all, the personnel playing in those areas. Reintegrating Curtis Jones at this point in the season, I get, is very difficult. Reintegrating anyone at this point in the season is hard, but in the midfield in particular, which has been trying to cu cultivate a certain dynamic, and especially when they're going to press you man for man like Atalanta do, it's going to make it difficult, especially with someone like Curtis Jones who likes a bit of possession, likes a little bit of space to get his head up, and just to slowly reintroduce him back into the team, you'd have expected it to be this difficult. I get the Joe Gomez thing. I don't think Gomez was meant to be playing right back for this majority of the season. In the same way, I don't think Kelleher was meant to equal and then surpass how many games Alisson was going to play this. This season. Same for Simicast on that far side. If Robertson is Robertsoning at this point in the season, I get it. Like maybe we rotate it a little bit, but also if Simicast is there more regularly, maybe there's a more bigger benefit to that, right? So these are three really critical positions for Klopp. Midfield, where he's trying to run it, either through McAllister or through Curtis Jones, and the two wings, where if you can't have cohesion with those kind of players out in the wing like that, there's always going to be a little bit of up and down in that time. Joe Gomez is not the right back that we planned for with Trent and obviously that position. But I don't know. I mean, to an extent, we can chalk it up and some of the goals we conceded to that. But at the same for Simicast, right? And I definitely think Liverpool felt a little bit disjointed in that back line. You couldn't tell whether they were playing onside or offside. There were times where Van Dijk and Canate were dropping very deep. There's times where even Van Dijk and Canate looked like they were being pulled apart. There were big gaps in between the two of them. Was that because of Van Dijk and Canate? Was that because of the gap on the other side that Canate was trying to cover? Or was that also because Atalanta, in a very specific, really brilliant um, tactical way, were trying to work out what Liverpool were doing and worked out pretty well through Gasparini and his brilliance? Guess what? Managers with tactical nous do pretty well against Liverpool. Italian managers do very well against Klopp. Klopp seemingly doesn't have a great relationship with Italian football in the sense that every time he plays it, it is a challenge for us. Anyway, point being, right, going into this game against Palace, we're not going to be playing Atalanta, but we are going to be playing on a slightly lower uh, confidence notch. And that's fair enough. Like, you're going to be knocked after a 3-0. A friend of mine earlier today said to me, hey, I don't want to see angry Liverpool. He's an Arsenal fan. I don't want to see angry Liverpool. I actually want to see more neutral Liverpool. I want to see Liverpool who are open to a surprise. Well, guess what? The last four or five games have all pretty much been surprises to Liverpool. FA Cup. Not a surprise, but, you know, fair enough. United got a late victory there. I think Liverpool would have felt they could have equaled, if not um, merited, that victory. And at the same time, I think Liverpool, again, was surprised by how well Manchester United played in that one. Then you go into the Brighton game. Brighton, good team. But again, like, maybe play too well and match Liverpool up in a little bit too well of a fashion. Same goes into the Sheffield United game. Loads of people talking about the XG, all these kind of things. I think it shows that, like, this is, again, down to style. You go into the Manchester United game, and obviously the draw feels like a loss. Fair enough. And then you go into the Atalanta game, and the loss feels like a loss, because guess what? It's very much a loss. So two losses in the past five games? Yeah, it's not a great record more recently, especially coming into this part of the season. Especially, I know a lot of people at this point are putting down Klopp winning the Carabao Cup in the season, but let's just reframe that ever so slightly. I get it. At the start of the season, you weren't giving Liverpool a hope in hell with this re midfield rebuild of getting anywhere near the top four, let alone challenging for a title. 
maybe we were saying top four, but let alone challenging for a title, I think a lot of people had Liverpool slipping outside that top four. Let's be real about that. They are very much entrenched in that top four at this point. And, it's, you know, I can see Manchester United and a couple of other teams bridging that gap in the short to medium term, but especially if Liverpool have changed managers. But this season, no. So, you know, let's just be honest about this. Let's, you know, let's have it right here. Finishing the season on just a Carabao Cup, I think, is a disappointment. But was it a disappointment that we set out for at the start of the season? Or, uh, you know, did we expect us to just win a cup or, you know, something in there? Maybe Europa League, go a little further than this? Possibly. So, yeah, good achievements. But that reframing changes also probably how the Liverpool team feel about themselves. They must be angry about that result against Atalanta. I was angry. Fans were angry. Some of the guys will feel humiliated. Virgil van Dijk, still very much the figurehead at the club, at least on the field, uh, gave a great interview post-game. I thought Harvey Elliott um, is the kind of player that um, I felt was also picked out unfairly. I think Simicas picked out. Gomez picked out. Kelleher was picked out for some questionable saves, maybe for the first one, and maybe just some positioning on others. But again, those are all things that Atalanta created in that game. Liverpool are going to know that going in against Palace, which by the way, we only narrowly won against Palace uh, earlier on in the season, 2-1, thanks to a red card to Jordan. I was it Jordan I? We, you know, we're not a million miles ahead of this team. They know how to match us up. Roy Hodgson is a difficult manager to play. Crystal Palace is a difficult team to play. Got some great pace on the counter-attack, some really tricky players, players we're gonna try and pin back either wing, but also through the middle. Liverpool hate when players run at them. So when you got people running at sorry, when you got people running at you like that, you're not gonna enjoy it, right? Add to that the fact that at the moment Liverpool maybe are a little lower on confidence, are feeling a little bit more vulnerable. I think Palace are probably going to feel there's an upset there at Anfield. It's not as if, you know, obviously since the City game, we've had a disappointing uh, result there against uh, Atalanta. Let me just go back through these for real. Disappointing result there against Atalanta. Mediocre result there against Sheffield United, a 3-1. And the Brighton one, which was a 2-1. So... You know, we're not in bad form, but we're not in great form, if that makes sense. I think going result dependent at this point in the season misses the point of the rest of the results we've had this season, where people are saying things like, oh, this team aren't good enough, blah, blah, blah. Well, you were hyping them up a couple of weeks ago. Every other channel was hyping them up a couple of weeks ago. So what should, what should oh, take now? I'm just saying, like, this team doesn't change just overnight. Maybe they get more tired. Maybe they have a few realizations. Maybe as it gets close to the time of clock, we can talk about pressure building up and an element of emotion coming into play in some of these games. But we don't know how some of the team are going to react. We don't know if we are going to get Trent back. We don't know if we are going to be reintegrating a Bicetics back into the midfield. I anticipate not, even though we've got that great highlight video of him earlier against Manchester United for the under-19s. But bear in mind, that's the under-19s. And he was still trying to pick out a couple of questionable passes. But still, are we going to reintegrate uh, you know, anyone in that front line? Are we are we looking at bringing back a Jota? Probably not, because, you know, it's going to be difficult at this point in the season. We're not going to be bringing him back at least into the starting lineup for a couple of matches. Although, again, if we're playing against Palace, good start. I, him playing a full 90? You know? This is what I'm saying here. Like, it's hard to reintegrate a lot of these players at this point in the season. And it would have been great to have a Jota against Manchester United. It would have been great to have a bit more dynamism down that right-hand side. Not that it's a criticism of Joe Gomez, but the point is against someone like Palace, Liverpool are really struggling against this team because they know how to match us up. Liverpool don't struggle in terms of playing an open game. They struggle in terms of matchups. And some people might say, well, the Atalanta game is very open. Sure. Liverpool, it wasn't nearly as open as Liverpool probably would have liked it to be. Atalanta played a very clear back three, two very clear wing backs, two central defensive midfielders and broke on Liverpool. There was a number of times where Liverpool should have played offside. There was a number of times where maybe we should have saved it. Uh, possibly Endo being pulled out of position or being in the wrong position overall or a ball just bumbling to the wrong person. It doesn't quite, you know, paint Liverpool in the best light. You don't want to pin all your hopes on that. But three different times? Sure. I think Atalanta played really well. But at the same time, I think Liverpool played perfectly into their hands. Will we do that again in the second leg? Who knows? But we do that against Palace... There's two different things. These are two very different tactics. The Premier League doesn't really play a back three like this. I was going back through our recent results, and let's be frank about this. Liverpool haven't faced a back three. They've faced very deep sides, but they've not faced a, faced a back three in a very long time because that's just not the way the Premier League plays. They've been worried at times by other sides, but they're not, they've not been playing against that back three. And then let's acknowledge the other part of this Palace game. Palace come in, and Palace have only got this to focus on at this point. Liverpool, then immediately after the Sunday game, have to go out there, obviously, to Atalanta, so going to Bergamo. And then 
They come back, then they play Fulham. And then we play immediately a couple of days after that. And then we play at Everton. And then we play immediately a couple of days after that again. So Liverpool's results and Liverpool's fixtures. Yeah, I'm right about that. Yeah, yeah. And then we play West Ham immediately after that. Then we get eight, nine days off until the Spurs game, which I'm gonna, hopefully going to be going to. And then we play uh, a week later, and then we play a week later. So if Liverpool can make it through this period, I think we're going to know whether Liverpool are still in the title race or not after they play West Ham. If after they play West Ham, Liverpool are still anywhere in this title race, and I mean like first, second or third, by, you know, within one result of whoever's top, Liverpool very much still in this title race. If Liverpool are more than one result away, they will be out of this title race, which puts pressure on them to win against these teams. Palace, who will sit deep. Atalanta, who will sit deep, though Atalanta obviously not in the Premier League. Do uh, Here's a question. I think, and a, and a pondering, I think we'll see in the Atalanta game that Liverpool try to come back, and if they don't, they cut their losses. Fulham? Obviously, they have to cut their losses, they'll be out. But I get like, you know, there'll be a point where they go, okay, what are we really doing here, guys? Let's just conserve this. Fulham, sit deep, break on us. Really difficult team to play. Everton, sit deep, break on us. West Ham, sit deep, break on us. We saw it. Moyes rolled over for us at one point uh, earlier this year, but it's not going to happen again. Spurs, Spurs are come and go, but they'll be, Ange Postacoglu will want to play well against Liverpool at the end of this season. Postacoglu possibly out of the top four race or top five race by that point. Top five might not even matter in the same way by that point for Champions League. So Europa League will probably be fifth place by that point because it looks as if, due to the results from Liverpool, uh, West Ham, Villa, that will probably lose that fifth place Champions League spot. And obviously, if the results go the wrong way for Arsenal and City. And then uh, Villa, Wolves. That's a tricky end to the season. I think we'll know after that week slash 10 days who's going where and who's going to finish where and whether we're having a goodbye tour or whether we're having a trophy tour. Palace can hurt us. I was actually looking back. I, I kind of want to talk about this a little bit because if you look at the previous matches between Liverpool and Palace, right, especially the previous one, Palace actually played really conservatively, basically sat back on the halfway line and then just broke when they could. And Liverpool were kind of still evolving a little bit of what they were doing. That wasn't quite this like clicky, confident team, but they did play uh, Nunes down the middle, Diaz down one side, Salah down the other. I think Gravenberg was more in that game then, and I think Trent was dropping into midfield. I don't think we're going to see Trent this weekend. We might see Gomez, but Trent was like very much playing that fourth midfielder. And Liverpool were really struggling against that midfield. Like if you look at that lineup, they put Chris Richards, who's basically a centre back, Will Hughes, Jefferson Lerma, uh, Lerma, who I do really rate, and then they also put Schlupp and Ayu quite narrow to try to deal with us, right? And basically to break through the middle, which is what Liverpool don't want to have happen against them. Because guess what? We want to try and spread the opposition out and move them around. Anyway, point being, it was tricky to, a tricky team, tricky game to play. And as much as, you know, uh, Liverpool got through it and showed the grit, it's a different point at this point, a different point at this point in the season. I think Liverpool actually need a bit of a statement result here. And when I say result, I mean like a statement where you look at it and you go, that's conclusive. I don't need to watch the highlights. I know how Liverpool played in that game. The frustration is, I do think they're a little low on confidence. I do think a couple of players are like, okay, well, you know, a couple of people are coming back into my position, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying there's egos that we can't overcome here in this Liverpool team, but you get what I'm saying. I think, I think we'll play, I think we'll start Salah. I think we'll play Nunez. I don't think we start Diaz. I don't know who else we have an option out there. I think maybe Cody Gakpo might play. You might even see Gakpo start this one. Who started? Yeah, it was Nunez who started the last one. And then later on, Nunez got subbed off for Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones. By the way, that was before the game changed. So anyway, uh, there's a lot to go at. I think that those substitutions and that overall sort of shows a lot there. By the way, Canate was subbed off in that one. Gakpo came in. Gomez came in. Who scored in that? Salah, Elliott. There's space in behind those fullbacks, is I guess what we're saying. Salah, maybe Diaz comes on late for a little performance. Maybe Elliot starts this one. Ooh, I don't mind that. Anyway, uh, do you wanna hear my starting 11? Uh, Kameen Kelleher, Joe Gomez, Kanate Van Dyke, Robbo, is he fit? Yeah. 
Endo, McAllister. I think you put Jones out again. Salah. Gakpo. Oh, actually, that's a good question. Do we, do we actually start Jones again, or do we put Jones... You, know, you see, McAllister's kind of a tricky one here. I think they're going to... Yeah, so I think we actually put Jones Elliott, push a little bit wider, put Salah on the inside. Yeah, okay. So actually, take out McAllister, put uh, Harvey Elliott in there. Mm, it's going to be a bit too much for Harvey Elliott, I think, maybe. Yeah, actually, just keep that midfield. Elliott will come in later. Gakpo out on that left. I don't mind that. Let me know who your starting 11 is in the comments below, and I'll chat to you guys again right here on the Lawrence McKenna channel. Uh, yeah, real soon. Much love. See you later. Bye.